Hello, I'm Bernie Hayes. Today's guests are Dr. LaCretia Crenshaw and also Barbara Washington. And we'll be talking about the color family today on the Bernie Hayes Show. Welcome back. My first guest is my longtime friend, Barbara Washington. Barbara, welcome to the show. Thank you so much, Bernie. So good to see you. It's good to see you, too, always. You've been doing so many wonderful things. Now you're involved in this, the color of family. <clears throat> Tell us about that, yes, about the, the Youth and Family Center. Yes, mm -hmm. and, I, and I love that. The whole <laughs> word family yeah. is what really got me involved. I've been involved with the Youth and Family Center for a number of years. My company, Bobcat Event Management and Consulting, had been called in by one of their former board members. I don't know if you know her, Janetta Hill of Personal Touches, who was yes. on the board at the time, and she mm -hmm. uh, asked me to come on board and help them to create the Discover Dubai. So I did that event for them, and then I was very fortunate that Dr. Michael McMillan uh, saw fit to invite me to help create a signature event for the Youth and Family Center. And hence, when I was thinking about kids, I'm always thinking about <laughs> how to make them better and improve Certainly. their lives. I thought coloring. I said, oh, gosh, and family. I said, why not call this event the color of family? And then with diversity being so critical in our yeah. uh, need in our lives, I wanted to add a component of diversity, equity, and inclusion. What colors are you including? I'm, I'm including <laughs> all the colors, starting off with the black, brown, uh, yellow, red, and white, all, all the right. five colors. And I'm asking everyone who comes out to this event to sport something of those colors and to kind of showcase who they are and what they mean so that we can all collaborate and merge in and blend together. Tell us about Bobcat and the event. Well, <clears throat> Bobcat uh, is a really uh, an event management uh, and consulting organization mm -hmm. that actually works with nonprofits and governmental agencies, uh, corporations to help plan and produce uh, events, but as well, we do public relations, we coordinate campaigns, governmental campaigns, et cetera, and we do a number of things. But I'm so happy to be a part of this event as a, a planner, and it just so happens I'm doing quite a bit of mm -hmm. most of the work because the work at the Youth and Family Center is so intense, the things that they're doing, and Dr. Crenshaw will be elaborating yeah. as to what they are doing there. I'm mm -hmm. telling you, every time I walk into that, 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 that site and I see and hear the children's voices. I'm reminded of my former uh, employees, uh, employer, the Matthew Dickey Boys and Girls Club. Right. It just blows my mind to see young people happy running through the halls and enjoying a snack or playing basketball. And as a matter of fact, they got a brand new gym floor. So the funds that we're going to raise from the Color Family is going to help them. And so what we adventure with the Color Family mm -hmm. is bringing in a five local artists. And they are going to uh, capture uh, their vision of what a family means to them. And last year, the artists were amazing. And, but they took those paintings and we hung them at the youth center. Mm -hmm. But this year, we're going to auction the paintings off by the artists oh, so that wow. we can try to raise more money. That's good. Now, when, <coughs> when the event be held and where? It's going to be held at the Missouri Athletic Club, which is downtown St. Louis. Mm -hmm. They are a big, big partner. They help with the gym floor uh, renovations and also other types of things. And uh, Mr. Donald Chip Mish, the general manager and COO of that organization, is the honorary chair along with Dr. Michael McMillan. Mm -hmm. And uh, the great Carol Daniel is going to be emceeing. And uh, we're just looking at having uh, a lot of fun. As a matter of fact, we're also going to be honoring, and this is a surprise, hasn't been announced, mm -hmm. the great Elliot Davis oh, is wow, going to be honored wonderful. for what he's done sure. to help bring up people to equality, taking care of the people, the underserved. That's great. You know, I've been to several events, and each one is lavish. I mean, they're beautiful, and you, you come up with all these different ideas and themes and so forth. How do you do that, Barbara? God... God gave me this uh, mindset, and I, I want people to be happy. I love music. Uh, we're going to have great music there. We're going to have great conversation with DEI professionals. We want to thank that the Cola family uh, comes in, and they, they donate the major monies to host this event mm -hmm. for us. But we need people to come out and buy the tickets at, at, $100, at $150. Okay. That's what, those are individual tickets. And Mr. McMillan last year was auctioning off. 
<laughs> his own money. He doubled his own money. And other people who were there, Carol Daniel was That's giving. Great. So we want to see a great collection of things happening. And the only way you can get things lavish is to get people to donate the items that you need. So we do need in-kind contributions. I need floral donors, and mm -hmm. we need people to help with the auction side and to put in auction things for a future year. Um, we just need help in every which way to help make that event beautiful because we don't have the funds to actually pay for those things. Sure. So if a group who has beautiful tablecloths, uh, like Personal Touches, who did it last year, mm -hmm. we could use any type of support like that. As we, How can they reach you and how can they help they, you? They can reach me at 314-478-2200. Uh, Okay. Or they may reach me by email okay. <laughs> at bobcat underscore 1955 at sbcglobal.net. And do you have an email address? Uh, my That was my email okay. address there. Okay. I just gave website? You. The website is www.bobcatevents.com. But to look for the Youth and Family Center website mm -hmm. is www.yfcstl. Uh, dot com. Okay. Dot org. Dot org. <clears throat> now, the Youth and Family Service Center is at downtown. Yes, mm -hmm. the youth is, is a more than a hundred year old organization. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, it's uh, been serving people, uh, intergenerational uh, type programs and, and youth programming and senior programs for a number of years. You know, they have a great history and I'm just excited to be a part of an organization that means so much. And with us being right downtown, when we can galvanize and come together and bring people together to support the young people in that area, it can only help make our city better. Last year, the mayor declared uh, it Youth and Family Day mm -hmm. uh, in St. Louis, which is going to take place this year on October 22nd mm -hmm. uh, uh, at the uh, Missouri Athletic Club at 530. Okay. So, so we're hoping that we can get a nice crowd to come out. And if you can't come, Support the Youth and Family Center. We need the help. <laughs> How can you keep doing what you're doing, Barbara Washington? I've known you so long. And you, you, you're always involved and you're always pushing. You're always gathering people. You do so much, and especially for the youth. Well, you know, I, I, there's no limit to what I will do to help make an event happen. For instance, like, I, you know, I'm not... Uh, you know, I, I decided to take a cut to get this thing to make it happen because I mm -hmm. put a lot of hours in. So last night I was up to 1030 stuffing 250 letters that was going out to the to the uh, solicitation list. Okay. So you have to do what you need to do to make it happen. I went to the post office this morning at eight, but they don't open to nine. <laughs> so you have to do whatever it takes to make the job work. And so, of course, I'm always looking out for new sponsors so I could be eating dinner or lunch at some place and I'll see someone that I know and maybe I'll ask them to get involved with the project. And we're trying to get, she, um, uh, Dr. Crenshaw needs good board members, some ad additional board members. She got a good board, mm -hmm. but she needs some additional board members and needs volunteers and good partners to come in and, and help her because she is going a million <laughs> and 100 miles a day. You were Dr. Uh, Martin Matthews' right arm. You were the whole Matthews Dickey's Boys Club. Uh, and girls. And girls, boys and girls. <laughs> what motivates you, Barbara? I get up and I see something that needs to be done. And somehow when I go to bed at night and after I'm, I prayed and I, before I go to sleep or when I'm sleep, asleep, I wake up with an idea. And I'm very happy. Like the idea when I was taking care of my boss when he passed away, Dr. Martin Luther Matthews, mm -hmm. I uh, came up with an idea to... Uh, for therapeutic reasons to write my life story. And it's coming out hopefully uh, by the, before the end of the year. My book is called May the Work I've Done Speak for Me the Gift. It's going to mm -hmm. be coming out. And so I try to do things that's going to inspire. And this book is designed to reach out to people and cover the topics that I dealt with that could have hindered me from being able to do the work that God wants me to do mm -hmm. to serve mm -hmm. and to help and to make a difference. But I took it and turned it around. <laughs> and so that's what we got to do. We got to give back. We got to help. And my young, my, my, my kids, as well as many of my mentors, who mentees who are all around the country, mm -hmm. are calling in now and helping me to do different projects. I've got a nonprofit called the Bobcat International Women's Career Mentoring and Scholarship Initiative. And the women I helped at Matthews Dickey are calling me and wanting to get involved as we adopt young people and send them off to college. My 
my college girl from this year is now uh, just went off to school. So I, I'm excited. We bought her everything she needed. Her whole room. She sent me a video of her room, how it looks. So that's what we have to do to help people. That's good. Tell us about the Color family, when it's going to be, the fundraiser, where it's going to be. Yes. Uh, we are and expecting when? about 150 people, mm -hmm. and, and it's going to be at the, the world-famous, the historic Missouri Athletic Club downtown, the Missouri Athletic Club they, they are our hosts, which is great, mm -hmm. and it's going to take place on October 22nd at 5.30. And, and believe me, people, we plan to start on time. We also plan to uh, end on, on, on time. So we're, <laughs> we're looking at about a two-and-a-half-hour event. Thank you so much, Barbara. Thank you. <laughs> a, so we're looking forward to the Color of Family. Yes. And, uh, within the Life Evangelistic Center, 24. 28 Woodson Road in Overland, Missouri. I'm Bernie Hayes, and we'll be right back after this. You may be facing a wide range of problems of all different sizes, shapes, colors, and, and you just feel like you're totally pressed from every direction at this particular moment. I would encourage you to pick up your Bible. It's a sharp two-edged sword that God wants to use to help you to know that you are more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus who strengthens you. It's a sharp two-edged sword. On the one side, you'll learn to praise God and trust Him in the midst of your own personal needs. On the other side, you'll see the need for social justice. You'll see the need to feed the hungry, to help the homeless, to help the downtrodden. It's a sharp two-edged sword. So yes, we need to be personally strengthened as we read the Word of God, as we begin to pray, as we trust God in, the, in our midst of our own personal needs. But the other side of that sword is that we uh, be motivated to really help those who are in need. Now, if we try to help people that are in need over and over, that's great. But if we do it out of our own strength, we're going to get tired out, burned out, worn out. Take it from someone who's been at it for 51 years. How can I keep going day after day? By finding new strength in our resurrected Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the Word of God, reading the Word of God. Walking in the midst of God's creation where there's so much variety and praising Him in spite of all the trials and tribulations. Because no matter how high the problem may be, or no matter how low it goes, for example, Romans chapter 8. Yes, it starts out in verse 1, there's no condemnation, ends that there's no separation. No separation from the love of God. That no matter how high we go, no matter how low we go, no matter how far or wide we go, God's love is there. Move forth in the love of God. Experience the power of God. Let the Spirit of God show you needs. Or you can be an answer to someone's prayer who's crying out to the Lord at this particular moment. They may be homeless, they may be hungry, they may have a personal need, they may be lonely. But you can be God's instrument to bring hope and help to so many people that are suffering at this particular time. Yes, the Word of God works. Faith works. Let's experience it. Let's live it. And welcome back. I'm Bernie Hayes. I guess this hour is LaCrissa Crenshaw. She's the director of the Youth and Family Center Service uh, here in St. Louis. And welcome back. Thank you. How are you? Hi, I'm great. Thank you. Dr. Crenshaw, tell me about... Uh, this happening that's going to happen on October 22nd, is it? Yes. Tell so on October 22nd, we are having a beautiful reception uh, event at the Missouri Athletic Club. Uh, the goal of this event is to expose more people to the Youth and Family Center and the things that we do to support children and their families and our older adults and our community in a major way. Uh, and the hope is that we are able to expose more people to uh, our goals, our vision uh, for the community, as well as giving an opportunity uh, for them to support us as we continue to grow uh, the Youth and Family Center in the community. What is the Youth and Family Center? So the Youth and Family Center is a nonprofit organization that's been around since 1888. So we've been around a little while, uh, and it started out being an organization that supported immigrants in mm. St. Louis. Over the years, it has evolved, and now it supports most of the North St. Louis uh, area. We're the closest downtown uh, community center that you would see. It's on 818 Cass mm. Avenue. Uh, and it used to be the old Cochrane Garden Community Center. And now we're working to rebuild it, refurbish it, uh, make it something that the community can be very proud of. Uh, we serve children uh, in an after-school program. We just did a seven-week summer camp. Uh, we have an older adult 
program, which is our senior program, is called Jazzy and Soulful Senior Program. We have a clinic there two days a week where we partner with Institute for Family Medicine, BJC, the Maryland Mission Fund, to be able to uh, support the community towards wellness. Uh, we have a food pantry two days a week from nine to two, and we do sports programming just to keep our children off the streets, give them something positive to do, and we're still growing the vision every day. Uh, coming soon, we plan to have a bank also coming in to start doing more financial empowerment for our community. So um, we're really working to try to create something that our community can be proud of. And the last project that we are planning to work on is a patio playground expansion program that would be intergenerational, where our seniors and our children can be in the same space, uh, having a good time, getting to know each other and building connections together. All inclusive. All inclusive. That's this is wonderful. I mean, you talk about diversity earlier. Tell us about the diversity progress. Yes. Project. Um, well, we decided to uh, mm -hmm. when we decided we were going to start doing uh, fundraisers again. Our mm -hmm. big thing was to look at something that we want to see in our future, and more of what we want to see is diversity. Mm -hmm. And I think it's important, especially when you work with children. Uh, and youth every day to help them have exposure that our world is looking more and more beautiful because of all the diversity that's happening. And if we only look through one lens, we never get to see the kaleidoscope of beauty that's out in our community. And so our goal is to ensure that we expose our children and their families and our staff and everyone to mm -hmm. what we could be together in our community through diversity. And so this this program, this um, gala that we're working or this reception we're working on doing is all about, again, continual exposure to what diversity looks like, how beautiful it is. We typically have some youth there. We have some of our older seniors that are uh, been in the program for a while who can speak to what we do. But it's really about allowing everyone to see what's possible when we come together for the community. Barbara Washington, my guest earlier this hour, uh, said black, brown, red, yellow, and white. They're, they're the things. Yes. Most less. And uh, I see the flyer here that you have. Uh, the pictures on the background there. Could you tell us what that is? So that is pretty much what you're looking at, some of the programming that happens mm -hmm. at the center. Um, you have a couple of our children that are in the computer lab. Uh, that is part of our after school program. Uh, you see a mentoring program where we have one of the mentors with one of their students. Uh, and he's been working with that student for the last year. And uh, since he's been working with him, he started out about a grade level to two grade levels behind and now is on grade level wow. from working with his mentor. Um, you see a picture of our last year's first gala uh, that we did uh, at the uh, MAC at the Missouri Athletic Club. You see uh, the food pantry uh, in the next picture. One of our children playing basketball for our sports programming. <laughs> our seniors being active, and our senior program has really grown. Really? Uh, we have over 150 seniors now that are part of that program, and they do field trips every week. Uh, they are not an ag a group that just sits back and plays bingo. They get out in the community, they go and visit other places. They have mixers where they get people from all over the city to come together and get to know each other. Uh, and it's about really kind of uh, eliminating social isolation for mm -hmm. our older adults. So when they start losing friends and family members, it can be kind of hard and depressing. And so our goal is to keep them connected. You can never replace who you lose, but there might be somebody in the room that might be a great best friend or new friend to continue this life journey with. So um, that is what you kind of this is beautiful. Right I mean, I believe is that Michael McMillan? I see it. There? Yes, it is. Uh, and so Urban he League. supports the program. Mm -hmm. uh, the Urban League is a very big integral part of this program, mm -hmm. uh, of this organization. Uh, they support a lot of the programming that we do. Um, he is actually going to be one of our uh, honorary chairs for the event on October 22nd. He was last year. Uh, he really is big on doing big things for our seniors and, and our children. Uh, so we every year do a big toy drive for the community. And last year we had over 500 uh, children and families that came out and wow. received toys and bikes and 
all of that. And that was kind of spearheaded with him behind the scenes doing a lot of the work to get people activated, like the Lynx um, and Miss um, Andrea Hussman's uh, realty company, all different kind of places. The Missouri, um, not Missouri, um, the Metropolitan Community uh, Church, they also were a big spearhead in getting things in. And so you get people from all over to kind of donate to the center, and we donated those toys and food to the family for the holidays. Michael's a very good friend of mine, and uh, I know how much he helps so many people. Now let's talk about Dr. Crenshaw. Yes. Tell us about you. So I am a humble servant for the community. I uh, have spent about 34 years of my life uh, in social services uh, and education. I enjoy working with children and families. I feel like our community is the lifeline of everything that happens in our, in our society. Uh, I've always been an avid uh, follower of people like Dr. King and Gandhi and Mother Teresa and Mandela. I guess I feel those people speak to me in terms of being change agents that want to see the world in a better space. And because yeah, for peace. <laughs> yeah, 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 absolutely. Mm -hmm. And and I feel like, you know, we all have paths that we are purposed towards every day. And I feel like mine was to work in the community and be a advocate for the children, have a voice and their families to have a voice and to be able to help them know how to get to their choices and to create the things they want to see. I was blessed to uh, be a mom who raised her son, uh, a single mom. Uh, I, I got an opportunity to see my child up obtain his dream. He wanted to be a doctor. And um, I worked uh, with a lot of different people to get him to his dream. And I feel like God allowed me that opportunity to see him become a, a you know, primary care physician mm -hmm. in Kansas City, where now he serves the community, working oh, wow. in uh, underinsured and uninsured uh, spaces for people who need the services the most. Um, and because God allowed me to see that happen for him, um, and me uh, for my dreams as well. I feel like my goal is to help others reach their dream as well. So you're in public service, and your son is in public service. It's a wonderful thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Dr. Krista Crenshaw is our guest, and uh, we're talking about a wonderful event that's going to happen October 22nd at the Missouri Athletic Club. We'll be right back after this. Behind me is the New Life Evangelistic Center administrative offices in Overland, Missouri, and this is where we shoot our shows for. Um, our worship shows and the Here's Help Network. And it's also where Zakid Baroudi and Bernie Hayes shoot their shows. You can find all of these shows at the New Life Evangelistic Center app, the NLEC TV app. You can also access them on your tablet or on your computer. And this is how you can stay up to date with all the things that New Life Evangelistic Center is doing. There are so many different programs that we've got going on, and God is doing many exciting things through partners like you. So if you want to support the work that New Life is doing, then please uh, access and give through the app. You can go online at nlecstl.org or give us a call at 314-421-3020. Again, 314-421-3020. But this is the best way to get him plugged into the amazing work that New Life is doing through people like you. And so there is something for you to get involved in today. And we are so thankful for our partners. Only through uh, the grace of God and your gift are we able to bless others today. Our Black History subject today is Barbara Smith Conrad. She was one of the precursors, the first African-American students to attend and integrate the University of Texas at Austin. As one of the first African-American undergraduates admitted to the university in 1956, the young music student was among the early pioneers in the movement to create a more open and diverse university community. After graduating from UT Austin, Conrad went on to have a distinguished career as an opera singer. She performed at many opera houses throughout the United States, Canada, Europe, and South America. Conrad received the Texas Medal of Arts Award for Lifetime Achievement and the History Making Texan Award in 2011. Barbara Smith Conrad, she passed May 22, 2017. Barbara Smith Conrad. It's wonderful to hear the Word of God and be blessed, but the Scripture says we must do more. The Bible says to him, I heard, know it to do good and doeth it not. It's a sin. And also, 
faith without works is dead, and we're to not only be hearers of the word, but doers also. NewLifeEvangelisticCenter.org is the website you can go to to discover what you can do throughout mid-America to not only be a hearer of the word, but a doer also. You can also call 1-800-334-3276 at 314-421-3020. Let's be doers of the Word of God. And welcome back. I'm Bernie Hayes. My guest is LaCrystal Crenshaw, Dr. Crenshaw. And uh, we're talking about the wonderful events that are going to take place October the 22nd at the Missouri Athletic Club. Uh, Dr. Crenshaw, why is this important, this event? This event is extremely important because it gives us an opportunity to raise funds to continue to grow the vision of and the mission of the Youth and Family Center. Mm -hmm. We're still trying to create a space where we are able to get our playground and patio and community garden off the ground. Mm -hmm. uh, we're working hard to expand our clinic. We started out in a one little space where it was an examining room. Uh, and people didn't realize that it was going to be such a big hit, but that clinic has become such a beautiful uh, mirror for our community to see the reflection of how wellness can happen. Our seniors use it every week. Uh, they go get their blood pressures checked, their A1Cs checked. They mm -hmm. are doing better with diabetes management and, and weight management. Uh, those kind of things are things we want to see when we're talking about health equity in our community. Uh, and so that we're trying to expand as well. We want to be able to expand our services in the sense of even our sports programming. Mm -hmm. A lot of times it's hard to find grants that only just focus on sports sure. programming, but getting students off the street in a positive way. This is a way to get exercise. It's a way for wellness, but it's also a way to teach team building and to learn how to connect with others in a good way. So um, those are the things that we're looking to try to support and sometimes operational expenses that mm. people don't always think about. We have a very old building. Uh, it is uh, still in a space where we're trying to renovate it. Mm -hmm. um, and so sometimes emergencies happen and even having an emergency operation fund to be able to keep that building up and going in great ways and mm -hmm. to keep it expanding for the services we want to see happen. Tell us about the collaboration with Bobcat and Barbara Washington. Yes. So uh, Miss Washington has been a delight in more ways than one. She has brought uh, expertise to the table to teach us a lot about you know, how we can get the community engaged and involved in our mission and vision. And so she partnered with us to help us create this event, um, mm -hmm. to spearhead this whole scene around diversity, because that was something we're both passionate about, and to be able to get people activated around it and to see mm -hmm. how all of us could come together to make our communities more beautiful one program at a time. So tell us how they can reach you. What, what are your needs, once again? Yeah, um, you can reach me at the Youth and Family Center. Uh, the telephone number is 314. So slow. Oh, I'm sorry, 231-1147. <laughs> okay. Uh, you can also check out our website where there's also a donate button, uh, and that's www.theyfc.org. It's the yfc.org. Mm -hmm. Or you can also email me for more information, and that's L. Crenshaw at the yfc.org um, but basically you know you can buy a ticket come and support come How and much see are the, tickets? the tickets are 150 dollars okay. mm -hmm. um, and there are different sponsorship levels mm -hmm. if people are interested in coming through there by way of their organization or their business uh, but our biggest goal is to get you in the room Come and see what we are about, hear about it. Uh, our big theme is around having artists exposed through diversity. So we're having different artists to uh, donate paintings to the, um, to the, organi to the uh, event mm -hmm. for people to be able to see different lenses of what family looks like in color uh, in diversity. Uh, and so that is another way, you know, you get different people to the table, you see different opportunities to see how community can come together and be beautiful. It's going to be take place when and where? Uh, it's going to be on October the 22nd, 2024. It starts at 530 for registration to get in, six o'clock at the door to come um, when the program begins. Uh, and it's going to be at the Missouri Athletic Club on Washington. Uh, so we invite you to come out. We hope you might be there as well. I just might be. Uh, with your wife, we would love for you to see what we're working hard to do to build and to be in our community. You're very kind. I thank you very, very much. You and Barbara Washington for visiting with us today. Thank you. And we're at the New Life Evangelistic Center 2428 Woodson Road in Overland, Missouri. And I thank you for your support. Reverend Larry Rice thanks you, and we all thank you. Have a great day until next time. I'm Bernie Hayes.